This video has been brought to you by CuriosityStream. No offense, James Horner, but this is precisely what I expect from Hans Zimmer, improving upon and zeroing in someone else's score. That's... Well, that's Gwen Stacy death shadowing and bravo for making it the opening shot. Can feel Star Trek Into Darkness's Dan Mindel behind the camera with the number of sliding Dutch tilts we get. But in a fast-paced flashback cold open prologue, tilting the camera askew consciously or subconsciously alerts your brain to something important. In this case, that briefcase from the first movie. I always thought that I'd have more time. Oh man, if that ain't a motif for this movie, more on that later. Peter's dad knew Carol? Pretty action-packed and engaging opening for just the prologue sans Spidey. Oh, that moment of realizing she's gone, so there's nothing left to save except the upload. Also, parallels of Richard losing the love of his life with Peter and Gwen, especially when this movie is really about the sins of the fathers between Norman and Richard. Another little brain nudge to keep you thinking about bell towers. Yep. Slick spider logo transition to one of the coolest setups for web slinging. <laughs> and then still upping the web slinging game. This time not first person, but Snorri Cam attached at a low angle to this brand new and improved suit. It's kind of him to announce his name to no one that can hear him, but come on, Paul Giamatti doesn't even care. I'll never be able to complain about it. Cordiality. Saving your future, but short-lived foe. Listen, New comic accurate Spidey eyepieces allow more of Max's face in the reflection. <laughs> Spidey sense knew that he needed a ride. I know we all think that we're immortal. What makes it precious is that it ends. So, you know I don't like anyone dying, ever, really, but they weren't about to let anyone be too caught off guard. So there's your first Gwen Gon Die hint. I know, the clock gear thing, but she dies falling off a bridge in the comics, so no one really knew what the bell tower meant. And fortunately, Peter can essentially freeze time now. It's not a knock, it's an exaggerated look at Spidey sense. He's moving in real time, his reaction time is just superhuman, and these slow-mo scenes are some of the best set pieces to come out of this series. Even a little mid-air kneeling. Rhino boxers on Rhino while Spidey whistles his own theme. <laughs> If only Jim Parge hadn't moved to LA, Parker would have had a few more seconds. I think I know that guy. Stan Lee is always a win, even when he's playing coy with graduation attendees. We know he knows everybody. <laughs> this one is a pretty deep cut, but Spidey was sick the night Gwen died, so it's a reference that goes up on the board, or the thingy. Peter sticks to everything, sometimes inadvertently, pretty much always lands. We have no chimney. What? <laughs> I'm cool with the way they build up Electro's fall. During the bodega robbery, you can actually hear him calling into a radio station claiming that- sort of became best friends. And now knowing he's all serial killer newspaper headline letter cutout slash nurse Betty slash Brooke Shields from that one episode of Friends, cinema wins where we don't give you just one measly reference, we throw them all at you. But knowing that sets up his turn plus electricity, you know? Why wouldn't you visit me? We're best friends. No one ever said it had to be subtle. Aces, man. Jesus. Also the typical superhero voice that Max hears in his head adding to the pedestal that he's put Spider-Man on. That's not what Peter sounds like even when he's trying to hide his voice from Harry later on. You like that Spidey? I like it a lot, Max. You made me a cake? And in my suit colors with lightning bolts and everything? He should call you the amazing Spider-Man. Also, yeah, the idea is that Max is a little off, but you'd all be lying if you claim that you didn't have these two-sided conversations in your head, naming superheroes. No, oh, they, they know you're not real. You like this How should I know if they can hear you? Apparently, Peter forgot the eggs again since there are only lettuce sandwiches for breakfast. To show you who you really are. Character actor feels like a dirty word sometimes, and I'll keep shouting out William Fickner's solo movie, but Chris Cooper is one of the ones you just recognize? Conklin from the Bourne series, the homophobic dad from American Beauty, that guy in The Patriot. I just, I know him, you know? I got the feeling he walked on set this day and nailed it in one take. See, he told you he's still forgetting the eggs. Also, good luck reading these J. Jonah subjects in a voice that isn't J.K. Simmons. Because you're special. Smythe. Uh, I mean, Mr. Smythe. Happy birthday. Feels like Mark Webb really just wanted to sneak Ryan the Wonderkind into his movie with little to no reason, and so he did. And I'm pretty good with that. So, do these catwalks move themselves, or do the painting ghosts do it? Happy birthday to me. Get it? Because he's, he's about to be reborn. Even bursting out of a container of liquid. Too graphic. It's too graphic. 
I love the evolution of Max's theme, so subtle and unassuming in the streets and then more orchestral for his birthday. There's more room on the sideline, fuck. Tried to turn everyone in New York City into giant lizards. Yeah, it was a weird plan, but he turned it all around by the end. There's nothing to distract from your unibrow. Yeah, well, it didn't stop him from dumping Sarah Lynn. That's a question, buddy. Oh, Even Harry is confused. Peter's just a weird dude. My name's Gwen. Gwen Stacy. Another Dutch tilt on Gwen's full name, since Peter would live to regret giving Harry that information. I don't know, you, you're either here for the dubstep or you aren't. I think I'm going with here for it. It's unique to Electro and it just works. <laughs> Sometimes I think people just got the wrong impression. It's not Raimi's trilogy, that was thick, deep-seated campiness. But it's also not Nolan Batman. We're still having fun here, <laughs> like the mirror. I know not everyone's a huge fan of Electro, but I feel like this is as close to an infamous movie as we'll ever get, so I have a soft spot for him. Do not move! Freeze! Get down! On the ground! Oof, this track. My enemy from Hans Zimmer, Johnny Marr, and Pharrell Williams. The lyrics are right from Electro's mind, paced exactly the way he'd be experiencing them. He must have seen Harry, I mean Andrew, do that on TV. <laughs> yup, come on. Mid-air, sticks to the cop car, and then catches it while landing. Spidey should have his own Olympic sport. This look from Spider-Man acknowledging the metal running up the grates to the handrail, showing that he already knew these people were all in danger. That... That guy just named Max? No wonder he's so angry. That's a yup. Hate this movie as much as you need to, but I dare you to hate this sequence. Also, the Spidey hero theme from the last movie is way more pronounced here, and it just makes you want to stand up and salute. Dubstep destruction. It's gotta be rubberized. Spidey suit. That, that's why he didn't get electrocuted. A reference to, but not the same physics kids from Peter's high school in the first movie. Unless they aged really quickly in two years and one changed ethnicity. On, A piecing things together montage set to just the weirdest song choices. The fastest way to, well, mostly accomplish very little and get distracted by the girl you love. Desk display cube thing is a convenient win, but a sweet tech win nonetheless. Ha! This movie is now a direct tie into the Jared Leto Living Vampire movie coming out next year. I can't believe a guy with two subs could afford Dan Mindel to shoot his video. And attempting to insulate your web shooter's montage set to Pursuit of Happiness is the fastest way to remind us of Project X. Remember Project X? The movie that made the Footloose remake a true story since Miles Teller is a great dancer and also introduced us all to Miles Teller because no one saw Footloose. Anyway, Steve Aoki's remix of Pursuit of Happiness is always a win. Come on, just try not to get hype. Do everything else a spider can. I know Dane DeHaan isn't most people's favorite, but the man can act. You tried delivering that line. And look, I don't think this is rude because Dane is clearly a good looking dude, but do you ever wonder if they cast him simply because of his ears? I mean, he has a lot of Green Goblin stuff going on just through his jeans. Emma Stone's audition for La La Land. Oh God, I'm so damn it. <laughs> See, this is exactly what I would use Spidey Sense for. Perfect slapstick diversion timing. Here's a thought. Decrease that closing pressure on your elevator doors there, Oscorp. I'm Dr. Cuff. <laughs> of course you are. I never tire of the crazy scientist, whether played by Martin Sokas or John Glover or Catherine Hahn or Michael Sheen. You could say they all... Get this up. I always do. Dub step in classical music. Seems like it'd be a problem, but when it's an auditory representation of a battle between two characters, you get a win. Gotta give it up for Dive, a band interestingly not from Peter's Queens, but from Caps Brooklyn. I'm your boy. You're my everything. These two still stand out above the rest with these emotional moments. It's almost like a competition of who's more sincere. Peter's feeling off kilter, so the camera goes off kilter. <laughs> Even when they're trying to be awkward, the chemistry is tangible. Like you would feel uncomfortable to be around them in public, which is believable. Go home, Felicia. Yeah, go home, Felicia. See you tomorrow, Felicia. B B bone we, Felicia? Fine. I know what you want to hear. Bye, Black Cat. You're going to die a horrible death, like your father. The difference is, no one is going to miss you. You know, I'm not sure I've ever wanted future Green Goblin to kill anyone more. That is the cadence of a win. Survey says, win. And how do I put this gently? Fired. And don't worry, he does. It just happens to be in a deleted scene. 
that I'm not going to show. Apparently the Parker's business life didn't account for their love life. The human DNA that I implanted in the spiders was my own. I know, the coincidence factor is off the charts, but come on, that's a pretty cool reason for Peter to become Spidey. Nothing is as important to me as my son Peter. Obviously there's some plot important-ish info, but I sort of enjoy that the main purpose of this scene was letting Peter know that he was loved by his father who was making a sacrifice for the greater good. <laughs> the only thing Max really wanted and it's a tad heartbreaking. <laughs> Dubstep combo punch. Matthew Modine. Hear me out. Electro was in Any Given Sunday with Dr. Martin Brenner from Stranger Things, who was in Too Big to Fail with Dr. Manhattan, who was taught the rematerialization trick by Brenner, who had taught Electro a decade earlier, and then also time travel nailed it. Also, yeah. Also comeuppance. We have to move now. Why, what's happening? Well, for starters, I have this hole in my chest. These are some stunning visual effects. The way Electro seems to burn in through thin air. You recalcitrant. Recalcitrant? Recalcitrant. Get out of here with your t- <laughs> little electric finger. Also love that his music follows him out the door as if it's diegetic. Now that's an insane password. The characters change every time he touches the screen. What is all this stuff? The future. We're just not gonna be in charge of it. This one's gonna be animated in a woman. This is some body horror stuff. Also love the implication that if he didn't make it to the suit, he'd be dead. And I can't lie, the Iron Goblin suit is pretty sick. Stop the cap. Lady, I ain't even moving. <laughs> Cliche dodge. Hey, Gwen, Gwen, yeah, that's great. Why don't you throw that green coat and purple skirt into the East River? Just a thought. It's tied a little carry our sorrows out to sea. Oh, good. She put on a blue one. Wait, what? The also, let's give them a little New York City respect. They're on top of the Manhattan Bridge, the bridge that is, in actuality, right next to the Brooklyn. No geographical cheating here. And you're always gonna be my best. Oof. It has such a sting to it, as if it's all inevitable. There's no outcome where she doesn't die because she can't escape him. It, it actually makes Peter sound terrible. Gwen, why choose you? There's something sort of poetic about Gwen and Peter's last truly happy moment alone together where they tell each other how they really feel is at the spot she dies in the comics. Depending on whether you only look at pictures in comic books or actually read the captions. England, I'm just gonna follow you everywhere. I can't believe we never got The Amazing Spider-Man 3 Far From Home. Jack the Ripper. The Amazing Spider-Man 3 webbing up Jack the Ripper Far From Home. Electro step off in the distance. I'm, I'm sorry. I know not everyone likes it, but they're internally consistent with its usage. Am I talking louder than I usually talk right now? Spidey sensory overload. <laughs> Apparently, that was a genuine mistake made by Emma, and it just worked. Hard, yep. Wait, is is this forced perspective, or is Electro super tiny here? I'm going with tiny, which is fantastic. Who said he had to stay at full size? Not until you put your true colors on. Ha! Spidey logo. Electro vomit. All right, now the dubstep steps it. Uh, look, wouldn't you be totally distracted if your opponent was making music as misdirection to sneak up and punch you? Hmm, that's what I thought. I hate this song. Because <laughs> he's a spider. Saving the guy who gets you killed. Nobody makes my decisions for me. All right, nobody. This is my choice. Again, I appreciate that they're going out of their way to give Gwen agency in her own death. There's just this little part of me that's hearing and seeing Julia Roberts yelling to Patrick Bergen that she needs to be punished for the towel misalignment. So what happens if you overcharge a battery? <laughs> Even the accidents in our experiments could be used for good. This isn't comeuppance. The dude just wanted a friend and clearly had some mental deficiencies, but it's a cool pseudo death regardless. I have to imagine there's like a heading or altitude change that's specific to every pilot so that in the event of a communication blackout, no two planes would ever collide. And if not, there should be. Less of a win, more of a shower thought. Give me money, FAA, I guess. Whatever, the Green Goblin design for Harry is terrible in a good way. They went gross, campy. When you said Spider-Man said no, you meant you said no. That's, that's just bad. You can try to twist it so it makes sense, but that's clearly from another version of that scene where Peter delivered Spidey's message instead of Spider-Man in person. Peter only said this. I'm gonna try and find Spider-Man. And it did doesn't make sense. I assume they ran out of time to fix it with ADR, which like, they could have dubbed this, he has a mask on. I gotta talk to Peter, he'll get back to you. Fixed it. Harry! Harry is dead! Gotta give Gwen props for not even showing an ounce of fear. And there's a reason she's Spider-Gwen in other universes. I hate it. I truly hate it. I hate that she dies, period. 
I hate that a new villain to the universe is responsible rather than a longtime foe. I hate that it feels unearned and slightly undeserved. But thematically, we've been leading here all movie. Everyone just needs more time. Richard Parker. I always thought that I'd have more time. Norman Osborn, Harry Osborn. Yeah, I just wish I had time for adventure. Electro, Gwen even understood something about it that no one else did. Time is luck. Even Peter. We just need a bit more time. Who spends the movie almost controlling time like a clock stopper with his spidey sense, always having just enough to succeed. And in the end, the end of Gwen's life, Peter tries so hard to gain just a little more time. He tries to even stop time, but breaks it in the process. He breaks the clock and he breaks Gwen. It's not some super hidden or subtle theme, but it's a through line that starts right in the opening shot. I said it wasn't subtle, but I don't know. The hand reaching out, it gets you. You can feel the desperation from Peter so much that his machine becomes an extension of his grasp. Also, that's insanely brutal. And one more nod to the comic, The Amazing Spider-Man 121, the night Gwen Stacy died with the time on the clock. At the very least, this is way up there as one of the best and most painful examples of the sacrifices Spider-Man has to make to be Spider-Man. It's really just this scene that was trying to set up more movies. Sadly, movies we'll never see, but I really see this as tasteful teasing. You must promise me that you will hold on to hope. Gwen being the catalyst to re-inspire hope in the guy who's supposed to give everybody else hope is such a satisfying ending to her story, even if it's at best bittersweet. I think that kid may actually be Spider-Man the way he slipped through the cops. And just in case you didn't remember, he is the windmill kid that Spidey inspired earlier with, you guessed it, hope. There's no place like home. I get it. It even alleviated my sad feelings. Obviously, they had to do it for the kiddos. Awesome, awesome shot, but stupid, stupid ending. Especially as the teaser from the trailer. Let's... Call it a draw to end on. Originally, I had this lined up for the release of Far From Home, but things got shuffled around, and I know a lot of you have been clamoring for this one, so I didn't want to disappoint. I think those of you who love it might be surprised to know that you're not alone. I honestly don't remember my reaction the first time I saw it, other than to Gwen's death, which upset me. Big surprise. But ultimately, I do think this movie gets a way worse rap than it deserves. It's got issues. My biggest complaint is that it's both rushed and drawn out at times. The finale is extra long, but it's because they dragged a bunch of B-plots into the power outage, like the planes in Aunt May's nursing school where she's in charge for some reason. All right, we're back, everyone, let's go! I think at least one of them should have been left on the cutting room floor. Harry turns into Green Goblin quick, right after Electro is dispatched, and then immediately kills Gwen, which leaves a strange, unearned moment taste in the mouth. But here's the thing. Gwen's death isn't about the villain. It's about Peter. So that in and of itself is okay, but Gwen's death is also bizarrely rushed, even though it's technically the climax of the movie. I'm not saying they weren't clearly building towards it, just that she dies and that's it. Peter doesn't want to be Spidey for a minute, and then he watches her speech about hope and he's good to go. I'm not sure if it was a we'll expand on sad Peter next movie type situation, let's end on a high note, or just a total lack of ideas on how to kill Gwen and then end the movie at the same time. Bit of both, I assume. The biggest faux pas was the Rhino teaser shot from the trailer staying a teaser shot in the movie. It's a little offensive, even if it was just the trailer house's decision. I know everyone else was mad about the Sinister Six setup as well, but... He didn't take anything away from the movie. Electro was our main baddie, while Harry was the supervillain, even if he only transformed in the last 15 minutes. There was a time I would have bet money that Mark Webb would have preferred to end the movie with Gwen's death and the studio laughed in his face, which is why the rhino scene feels tacked on and out of place. I would have been wrong, since he and all the writers felt like they couldn't end there. I'm not saying it would have been a smart move, or that people wouldn't have lost their minds, but pull this movie out of the larger universe it exists in, and I think that's the right call as a standalone story. Without another movie, it makes this an even more tragic duology, but still the more appropriate ending. My ending would have been no rhino on screen at all, just Peter picking up his mask and walking out of his bedroom door with one last blur out Mindel Dutch tilt. And on hope, not quips. I ask you to put your mechanized paws in the air. But I'll admit that this ending is probably truer to a comic story, right down to the cliffhanger. It's not a huge deal, and like I said, it does allow you to walk out not feeling like a puddle of emotions. Hope, one way or another. All right, enough of what people didn't like. Tom Holland is amazing, don't get me wrong. But there's a confidence that Andrew Garfield has as Spider-Man that really neither Tom nor Toby had slash have. I'll happily eat my words after Far From Home if I'm wrong, and maybe Homecoming was just a gaining confidence episode. But Garfield in this movie is how I read Spider-Man in my head. I don't even think it's a difference in acting skill level. Garfield was allowed to be the man, whereas we're constantly awing Tom Spidey in some ways. Both work, personality differences mostly, I think. The other thing I'll defend is the goof factor. Like I said, it's not Raimi's level of camp, but Spidey in a fireman's hat? Light my candles? Everything a spider can? They weren't making Pride and Prejudice unless you had zombies. I feel like people, critics, expected a darker take because we'd already had Supreme Camp. 
but that wasn't the intention. I love it. It works. It's funny. God save the queen. I don't think anyone would complain about the visuals. The occasional musical choice? Maybe. But visuals from the occasionally obvious cinematography, shot composition and framing to visual effects in super slow-mo, it's all super tight. Even the web slinging is on par with our current Spidey, if not even more entertaining in places. I know some people have problems with Garfield's Parker still, and I get it, he's still a little too smooth. But the chemistry between Emma and Andrew is pretty on point. And that was a large part of the reason they got away with jumping to the night Gwen Stacy died so quickly. Their relationship felt real, partially because it was. So even if the story or history or longevity of either didn't exactly earn it, the characters did. And obviously Garfield sold it. In some ways I'm sad we'll never get to see this Peter Parker on the big screen dealing with the death of his first love. At the same time, I'm totally cool with them not doing that to Holland Parker. So how am I going to avoid the comment section of this video? If anything will see far from home before I publish. I mentioned that this movie is just a train heading towards her death, but it actually started with Captain Stacy's warning and the promise that Peter broke. I just think that speaks to the vision from Mark Webb and his literal team of writers, which again makes me sad we don't get to see where they were going. But alas, we have a whole new Spidey now, and he's pretty much kicking butt around the world. And if you've seen Far From Home already, and you're caught up on all my Spider-Man Everything Great About videos, and you just need a spider fix, today's sponsor, Curiosity Stream, has a short film all about spy. And you can totally learn. Uh, okay, no, no, no. Look, you, you like spiders. You're welcome to hop on that train, but you know I can't handle it. But look, fortunately, Curiosity Stream has a ton of other documentaries and nonfiction titles, even other stuff related to Spider-Man, like science and genetics, technology, even nature. Like this series called Catalyst. Which, wait, what the heck? Oh. Well, see now, he's a cute spider. But it's not just spiders. They have over 2,400 titles, which you can have unlimited access to for $2.99 a month. But my super amazing fans can get 30 days absolutely free if you sign up at my link, which is at the top of the description, and use promo code CinemaWins. You can stream from pretty much any platform worldwide. I love working with Curiosity Stream because I get to watch one of their films or shows as work whenever they sponsor me, and I don't even have to analyze it. Just vouch that it's good. Which, consider it vouched as a confirmed self-diagnosed arachnophobe. The peacock spider could be my new buddy. So check out the link in the description. It's always a massive help to the channel, and you've got nothing to lose for 30 days to see if it's right for you. Don't be surprised if you find a lot of stuff you're interested in. Next week, something I know little about but hope to know a lot about by the end of next week. Fair wage. Well, Jim, if it was 1961, it paid me a fair wage. Just don't call me late for dinner, you get it? <laughs>